Hey, it's Joe here. How's it going? Um, today I wanted to talk about um, using the sample scanner to create a highly customizable distortion unit within the ER301. Um, so let's get started. Um, so right here I've just got um, kind of a basic synth set up, just a sine wave oscillator that, uh, you know, is, uh, and I've got a little sequence coming into it. We'll listen to it. So super basic. Um, so what I wanted to do uh, was start by um, just kind of giving an overview of how this sample scanner works. Um, so let's grab um, a sample scanner unit. And um, what I'm going to do is roll the, the width all the way up to one uh, and zero out the fade. And uh, we're going to assign a sample here. Um, so kind of the first example I wanted to show, and I'm, I'm using the Adventure Kid waveform. Um, library here, which is uh, uh, roughly 4,000 something um, single cycle waveforms. And um, the first example I kind of wanted to show, um, just to demonstrate here, is um, these, they're these perfect waves. Um, so I'm going to grab um, the saw wave, and let's use that. And let's just go take, uh, take a look at it. Um, so it looks like this. Um, so this is almost like a perfect linear ramp up, um, except that uh, it's, it's phases offset a little bit, right? Um, so actually kind of what I wanted to show was uh, the, the first example where this would have no effect. Um, so um, just kind of imagine, if you will, we actually what we want is a, a ramp that kind of goes, uh, you know, straight up vertically across. Um, and what, what that's going to do, you know, this is actually mapping um, our input to whatever waveform we have loaded into the sample scanner. So if I had that, um, you know, if I, if my sample coming in was, uh, you know, at uh, zero um, over here, um, we'd get a zero out. And uh, if my sample coming in was a one, you can just kind of imagine this waveform shifted a little bit. Um, we'd get a one out, um, you know, just a very linear ramp. So um, what I'm actually gonna do to set that up since this is uh, out of phase is I'm gonna adjust this phase parameter just a little bit here and bring this up to, to 0.5. Um, so you don't actually uh, get a graphical display of that, but um, you know, this is going to be uh, essentially a perfect ramp up starting at zero. Um, so um, let's take a listen to that. And if I bypass this, essentially hear that the input is unaffected, right? Um, it's just kind of doing a perfect linear mapping um, of the incoming input. Um, so um, if I start to take this out of phase, um, we're going to actually get uh, probably some pretty gnarly distortion out of this. So let's just take a listen to what that might sound like. Um, so the next thing I wanted to take a look at was uh, loading up another sample here, and let's stay here in this perfect waveform bank and uh, just load up a perfect sine sample. Um, so if we go in here into edit sample, you can see that that's just a, a perfect uh, sine wave. Um, so if we take a listen to this, let's go ahead and reset the, the phase here. Um, so, um, I think I did a, a video on this earlier. We actually used to be able to do this exact same thing with a, a sine wave oscillator by feeding, um, you know, uh, whatever signal into its, um, uh, phase input. Um, so we're kind of doing the same thing here. Um, and you can see here, I've got, um, after the sine wave oscillator, I've got an input level control. So what we're going to do is actually kind of crank this up, um, the level up above one or, or down below one and just kind of hear what effect that has on it. So um, you can start to hear that you get, um, you know, a lot of more harmonic content out of those sine waves as the as the wave folds, uh, you know, upon itself in a, in a sinusoidal manner. 
So like I said, we could do that before um, using a sine wave oscillator. So what, uh, in terms of distortion, what does the sample scanner bring to the table? Um, well, now I'm not just able to load a sine wave. I can actually load up any waveform. Um, so let's go take a look at maybe something more interesting. Um, So here I've got this, like I said, this Adventure Kid waveform set, and um, gosh, there's just all kinds of waveforms in here that I could potentially use now to sort of uh, do a wave mapping distortion for my input. Um, so I'm going to try this acoustic guitar sample here. And looks like I've already got that one loaded, so let's just go find it here. And I believe it's here, so let's take a look at that waveform. So um, that's, you know, pretty, pretty interesting looking waveform. Um, let's see what that sounds like. So another control that I have available for kind of shaping this distortion, um, in, in addition to kind of changing the input level um, is the space control, right? Because that's going to take that waveform and shift it and it'll really drastically affect the mapping. So let's listen what happens to the sine wave as I adjust the, the phase parameter of uh, the sample that's loaded. So cool stuff, huh? Um, so, you know, we've got um, not only a, a choice of, you know, whatever waveform we want to put in here to kind of shape the distortion, uh, also changing the input level. And, and by the way, changing the input level, uh, because this is mapping and the sample, um, so the way this uh, sample scanner works is that this this actually wraps around, right? So um, if you if you take the level above one, um, it actually is going to wrap around and kind of repeat this waveform again. Um, so what you don't you know you don't really get like a, a digital clipping kind of distortion sound out of this. You actually get something that um, you know I guess is warmer. Um, so um, that said, let's go uh, take this. Uh, I've got the sine wave oscillator here as my input. Let's bypass that. I've got a a triangle here for just a you know a little bit richer uh, incoming uh, waveform signal. So let's see what that sounds like. Cool. And just uh, kind of another uh, thing I wanted to show you here is that um, these distortions can get pretty interesting um, if you can if you want to put some EQ um, before or <clears throat> after the distortion unit or, or even both before and after. Um, so let's just take uh, take a look at that. So I think you're getting the idea there. There's just a, a ton of possibilities for, uh, you know, <clears throat> different types of distortion that you can create using this technique. Um, you know, you've got your, your choice of uh, sample that you can load in here. You can adjust the phase. Uh, you can adjust the input level. Um, you can put some EQ before or after it. Um, and, and really, you can have a lot of control here. So, you know, some of these waveforms um, that you load in might sound great. Others might not sound so great. Uh, so it's just uh, kind of some experimentation to really figure out what you want. But... Um, a lot of possibilities here for, you know, distorting uh, an input signal. And it doesn't have to be a simple input signal either, like a, a sine or triangle. You know, you could use this on, uh, you know, a, a recorded input or, or whatever you want. So 
Anyway, hope this sparks some ideas and uh, you have some fun with it. Take care.